Hi, boys and girls. We are back together again to study the final part of Joseph's life. And this is my favorite part because it has such a happy ending. Not just for Joseph, but for Jacob, his father as well. Because poor Jacob thought he would, well, both of them thought they would never see each other again. Because Jacob thought that Joseph was dead. Well, it'll also be our final study in the book of Genesis because the book of Genesis ends with the story of Joseph. And Exodus picks up 400 years later and they are still in Egypt. Well, continuing our story from the last lesson, you remember Pharaoh had those two dreams and Joseph interpreted those dreams for him and told him that it was a message from God there are going to be seven years of plenty. Everything that they plant is going to produce abundantly, and they'll have way, way more than they'll need. But after those seven years, there is coming a horrible famine, a famine where their livestock will die. And most, the worst part, people will die because of starvation. Well, Pharaoh tells Joseph that he wants him to be the one to prepare Egypt for that horrible famine. So Joseph gets right to work. He starts building grain bins, huge ones, in various locations in Egypt. And he tells all the people to bring the abundance of their grain to fill those bins full. Would you like to know how much he stored up? Let's see what the Bible says. In Genesis 41:49, it says, Joseph gathered very much grain. How much? As the sand of the sea. The kids, have y'all been to the beach? I know most of you have. And everywhere you look, in every direction, it's nothing but sand. The next time you go, I want you to imagine that sand as being the grain that Joseph collected. Plus, he collected a lot more. In fact, it was so much, he quit trying to keep a record of it. It was just immeasurable. So how much was going to be enough? Joseph was storing enough to save the whole world. He would become a life giver, a life saver for all the people on the earth. Sure enough, when the fam years of famine began, about uh, the about the end of the first year, it was it was severe. Uh, their crops failed, and their livestock and their families were facing starvation. Word gets around that there's plenty of food in Egypt to be bought. How bad is the famine? In Genesis 41:56, the famine was all over the face of the earth. So all countries came to Joseph to buy grain because the famine was severe in all lands. It was a horrible famine. Jacob, of course, is affected by it too because their crops also failed and they're facing starvation. So he sends his 10 sons, 10 of them, except for uh, Benjamin, who's the 11th, to Egypt to buy grain. Well, as soon as they get there, they're directed to the governor's palace. And you know why? Because the governor was the one who decided who could buy the grain and how much they could buy. Well... We know who that governor is, Joseph. Can you imagine his surprise when he looks down upon those 10 men who are knelt before him and he realizes those are the 10 brothers that despised me, that wanted to kill me. They're the ones that threw me in that pit and sold me into slavery. They stirred up memories that Joseph had tried hard to forget. 
The Bible says he speaks to them harshly, and he accuses them of being spies. He says, you're not here just to buy grain. You're here to spy on Egypt. And they said, no, we're all uh, sons of the same father in Canaan. And we have yet another brother, our youngest brother, who is with our father in Canaan. And they and all our families, they're starving. We just came to buy grain. Well, Joseph said, I don't believe you. And he throws all of them in prison. There in, after the third day, he lets them out. And let's see what they have to say. First, I want us to talk about who in the New Testament had, has, will have everyone bow before him. In Romans, the 14th chapter, it says, For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. The boys and girls, you know as well as I do, that not everyone who has lived, is living, or will live, has bowed down to Christ and called him the Lord of their life. But the Bible says there's one day coming that they will. Now, don't you think the best thing for us to do is to do it now from a willing heart when it'll mean something instead of waiting till that day when it won't mean anything to Christ because you're just being forced to do it. I think I would do it now. Well, Joseph pretends he can't speak the Hebrew language. He speaks to them only through an interpreter. Would you would you know why he would do that? I bet you can guess, some of you. He wants to hear what they have to say when they're talking to each other, when they think no one can understand what they're saying. Well, his plan works, but Joseph is not prepared to hear what he's going to hear his brothers say to each other. Would you like to see what they say God is punishing us for the horrible things that we did to Joseph wow Joseph he was shocked he thought when they sold him into slavery when they wanted to kill him and just did that instead they never thought about it again it never bothered their conscience. And he thought that it didn't uh, even um, concern them the grief that it put on their father. So Joseph is surprised that he sees that they regretted doing it. Well, let's see what they did to Joseph. Let's see it. tear off the beautiful coat his father had made for him. Now, think about how horrible that was for Joseph. Those brothers didn't even know how deep that well was. They knew it was dry. It didn't um, have water in it. They didn't know if it would break his ankles or if it would break his legs or break his back or his neck when they dropped him in there. They didn't care if it killed him or not. They wanted him dead. So, can you imagine how Joseph feels? All those horrible memories stirred up in his heart and his mind. Well, he tells them that they can go home with the grain that they came after, but he has Simeon tied up and carried to prison, 
and he tells them the only way that they can get him back or to buy more grain is to bring that youngest brother with them and maybe he would believe they're not spies. Can you imagine how those brothers felt? Now their father hasn't just lost one son, he's just lost another one. Simeon's not going home. The story gets worse. On their way home, they realize that the grain that they bought, the money they paid for it is inside the sacks of grain. And all they could figure out is, so no, no, this can't be happening. This was just a trick that the Egyptians played on us because they just want to take us back to Egypt and sell us as slaves or throw us in prison or have us hang for being thieves. Now our father will have lost 11 of his sons. He won't survive it. But you know what? No Egyptians came after him. They just couldn't figure that out. What could be going on? Uh, the only thing they knew to do was take the grain home. Well, at the end of the second year of the horrible famine, their crops had failed again. And the famine was showing no signs of getting better. Their livestock and their families were facing starvation again. So they had to go back to Egypt. Jacob thought, I cannot let Benjamin go. He may end up in prison like Simeon. Or they may all be put into prison. But he knew Benjamin and all of them were going to starve to death anyway, so he was going to have to take the risk. Well, they load up their wagon with wagons with lots of gifts for Egypt, for the Egyptians. Yet they also carried twice as much money as they paid for the first load of grain that they were going to pay for. You know, Jacob was very rich. He inherited his riches from Isaac. Isaac inherited his riches from Abraham. And kids, do you remember where Abraham got his riches? Remember? From God. God gave him all of that. And the Bible says Abraham was very rich. So they had plenty to take. Poor Jacob. That was a sad day for him because when he looked at Benjamin, he thought, this may be the last time I ever see his face. Well, the brothers are escorted back to the governor's palace. And when they're bowed down before Joseph, Joseph realizes Benjamin is among them, his youngest brother, the only one that loved him. He becomes emotional at the sight of uh, Benjamin, and he has to step out of the room. He wept. He didn't just step out of the room. He had to go to his private chambers. He wept so loudly. And the Bible says when he regained control of himself, he washed his face and he went back before him. Well, he decides he'll have a feast for him so he can spend a little more time with Benjamin. Well, his servants seat them at the table and the brothers get to looking and Benjamin has at least five times more food in front of him than the rest of them. I wonder if it was so um, Joseph could see their reaction of the favoritism. I don't know. But that was, I don't think it bothered them because it had been over two years since they had eaten like that. Because that, that, remember, they were all starving at home. And I wonder if maybe it hurt their conscience just a little bit to think they're eating like that and their families are starving. Then they get to notice them. They've all been seated in the order of their birth, from the youngest to the oldest. And they thought, 
There's no way the Egyptians could know the order of our birth. How, how could they know? Are they mind readers? Are they magicians? How, uh, how? Couldn't figure it out. But do you know what Joseph was thinking while they were eating? I wish I could sit at the table with Benjamin. You know why he couldn't sit at the table with Benjamin? Because the Bible says at that time it was considered an abomination for an Egyptian to sit at the same table and share a meal with Hebrews. All he could do was just sit there and watch Benjamin and enjoy his food and listen to all the brothers talk to each other. He was curious, I'm sure, to know how the brothers treated Benjamin. Was he an outcast like he had been? Then Joseph does something so peculiar. He asked his servants, or tells them, to put his personal silver drinking cup in Benjamin's sack. Now, what's so special about that cup? Because only Joseph and his cupbearer could touch that cup. The cupbearer had the great responsibility of anything that went into that cup for Joseph to drink that it was good to drink. The next biggest responsibility was to make sure nothing poison was in that cup. So I'm sure Joseph's servants wondered why he would treat his cup like that, to have it put in a sack of grain. Oh, the brothers were so happy to leave to go home because they couldn't wait to tell their father how they had been treated. They had been treated like royalty, invited to eat at the governor's palace. They had Simeon with them. He's going home. They have plenty of grain that they're taking home with them. And best of all, nothing bad had happened to Benjamin. He's with them as well. Well, I'm sorry to say, but their joy is short-lived because Joseph tells his palace manager, go after them and ask them why after I have been so merciful to them and generous to them that they would steal my cup. Well, the brothers are in shock. Why would they think they stole the cup? They're so sure they don't have that cup that they tell the guards, if you find his cup with any of us, let that man, uh-oh, die. And the rest of us become your slaves. Well, boys and girls, I don't have to tell you where they find the cup. It's in Benjamin's sack. And the Bible says that they tore their clothes. They rent their clothes in grief. Do you remember several weeks ago, we talked about the word rent and what it means? Do any of you remember? It means to tear apart violently. So all the brothers tore their clothes apart violently with terror and grief. Now their father's going to lose all 12 of his sons. And his most special son is facing death. Well, they're directed, they're taken back to the governor's palace and the Bible says that they bow before Jesus for Joseph with their faces to the earth and they beg Joseph please keep us as your slaves but let Benjamin go home to our father if Benjamin doesn't return to our father he will die well Joseph is so overcome with emotion because they have proven how much they love their father and how much they love Benjamin, they're willing to sacrifice themselves for Benjamin. Well, he can't keep the charade up any longer. 
and he tells his servants to leave. And when they leave, he begins to sob heavily and he tells them, I am Joseph. Wow, I am Joseph. Can you imagine the brothers? What? How? That's impossible. How could you be Joseph and be the highest ranking official in all of Egypt? That all countries have to bow before you. Even the Egyptians have to bow before you. But when they get to looking closer at him and listening to him, they to him, they realize it really is Joseph, and then they get scared. You think you know what they're scared of? He's going to do the same thing to them that they did to him, sell them as slaves. But Joseph tells them, it's not that way. Joseph says, I've forgiven you for what you've done. In fact, it turned out to be a good thing that you did that because in my position that God has lifted me to, I've been enabled to save the world. I have been enabled to become a life giver to the world. He says there's going to be five more years of this famine. I want you to go home and I want you to get our father, get your families, all your belongings and I want you to come to Egypt and I will take care of you through this whole famine. Do you know the Bible doesn't say that Joseph thought it or he said it, but his actions shouted out to us that he's thinking, even though they hate me or hated me, I'm going to save them and I'm going to love them. Who else said that? In the New Testament, Jesus said in John 15, they hated me without a cause. They hated Jesus to the point that they did kill him. Now, it was only because Jesus allowed it to happen, but Jesus allowed it to happen because he loved them even though they hated him, even though they were killing him. On the cross, he asked God to forgive them because they know not what they do. How much love is shown in Jacob, I'm sorry, Joseph and also of Jesus. Joseph's servants, well, they heard about what's going on and they go to Pharaoh and they tell him. And Pharaoh is so pleased that Joseph's being reunited with his family and he knows they're going to have to have some place to live so he tells Joseph he is going to give them the land of Goshen you'll see a little bit later what is so special about that gift Joseph's brothers couldn't wait to get home and tell Jacob the good news he is going to be able to see his precious Joseph again. Now, boys and girls, the Bible doesn't say they confessed what they did to their father, but they had to make some kind of explanation because how else could they explain Joseph being there and them making their father think he was dead? Oh, it was a wonderful day, a wonderful day for Jacob. He hugged Joseph for a long time. Well, boys and girls, Jacob was allowed to live to be 147 years old. And God blesses him with those last 17 years to spend with his precious son, Joseph, in Egypt. Now, right before Jacob dies, he asked Joseph if he would take his body back to Canaan and bury him with his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham. And Joseph does that. 
just one second, I want to talk to you about the wonderful gift that Pharaoh gives back. He gives this huge section of land right here to Joseph and his family. Now, what's so special about Goshen? This is the Nile River, and all this green is the only inhabitable place for people to live at that time. It was the only place that they could plant their crops, the only place that they could raise their livestock because the Nile River overflowed its banks every year and when it receded, it left rich soil deposits. Now, look at that huge section of land in proportion to the of, of all the inhabitable land. Pharaoh could have given him a little bit there or given him a little bit here to live on. No. He gives Joseph the best that he had to offer because he knew it was only because of Joseph that there was even life in Egypt anymore because they would have already died from that famine. How could he possibly pay Joseph back? other than to give him the best he had to give. Well, Pharaoh demonstrates his love, how much he loves and appreciates Joseph. Now that's a godly attribute or trait that we need to have. He's a heathen king worshiping idols. Now what do I mean by that? Well, boys and girls, just think about what God's done for us. He gave us his son to die in our place so we wouldn't lose our souls through eternity. That we'll have a life on the other side of the grave. What did Jesus do? He's the one that did the dying. How much love was that? And what did the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit enabled men by working through their minds to write down all of these things into a book that we call the Bible so we would know all of this, that we would know how much God loves us, that we would know how to be saved, that we would even know what sin is. So we would know that God is a God of love and how much he loves us. So when we give back to God, don't you think we should give him the best that we have to offer? Because when we give, we show God how much we love him. If we love him a lot, we're going to give him a lot and not just the scraps. If we love him just a little bit, we're just going to give him a little bit. So please, kids, remember that all of your life. I hope you learned something today, and I hope you'll join me again because we're going to be studying the book of Exodus, one of my favorite, favorite books, and I'll have more video clips for you. Before I leave, I want to give some credit to, especially BibleCollections.net, for that video clip. And if you liked that, you need to go to their website and you can see the entire clip and some others. My gifts come from Giphy.com and of course my images from freebibleimages.org from Sweet Publishing Company. Teachers, you can prepare your lessons just like I do. I hope you'll join me again. Bye-bye.